guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sonnet, the owner and creator behind Sonnet's Garden Blooms. And in today's video, we are going to be doing a thrift to treasure. So I have been thrifting like crazy and I have a few items, okay, a lot. Uh, that I have to flip to get ready for Antique Acres, which is May 19th and 20th. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's a vendor event that I will be actually not only attending, because I will be there, uh, but I will have uh, a space where I will set up all of my goods. So I have been diligently uh, prepping items to get ready for that. So I hope you enjoy today's video, and I can't wait to hear what you guys think. To kick off today's video, I want to mention that I did get the DIY paintbrushes and if you've been wanting to get your hands on one of these, I do have them available in my online store, which is www.sonnetsgardenblooms.com. And I am going to show you how I use a couple of these in today's video. But honestly, I was trying to figure out if there was one I had to pick, which one would it be? And honestly, I can't just pick one. They are all so awesome. For project one, I recently found this at the bins and it caught my eye because it was an oil painting. I loved the look of it. I really liked that orange in the actual um, boat itself, just that pop of extra color, and I loved all the blues. So basically, I loved the whole thing, uh, but I decided I wanted to paint the frame orange. I went with Summer Crush because the orange was had that fire starter look to it, but it also had a bit of Summer Crush. The um, paintbrush from DIY, uh, this one was perfect for this task because I had to really have a really steady straight line there and this one was perfect. It's called The Perfectionist and it really did the job. So it gets into all the details, it helps you create that perfect straight line and honestly, I have never worked with a paintbrush that had that pointed tip like that. So I would definitely recommend this one for all those nitty gritty details and perfect straight lines. Next, I went in with a damp rig and I do love wet distressing. It really keeps down on the dust and you get a lot more control over how you distress your piece rather than with a piece of sandpaper. So I just randomly uh, go here and there and bring back that color that was the original paint color just uh, randomly uh, because I really like that look and I feel like with it being such an old painting that there would be some wear and tear on the actual frame itself. So once I get done with that, then I'm going to let this dry and then go back in and I'm going to seal it. I'm using Big Top from DIY to seal this piece, but you can use any type of top coat such as a poly or uh, any type of wax. Anytime you're using DIY paint, it can be reactivated uh, with water. So once you're completely set with your project, you'll want to seal it uh, to just lock that color in. And uh, again, any type of top coat. For my next project here, I found this at the bins and the funny story here is I picked this up and I actually intended on putting it back. I did end up accidentally putting it in my cart 
And if you guys know how I am at the bins, I find so many good things or what I think are so many good things. I just put everything in the cart and I've decided I do need to start going through my cart um, in the future because this was on the bottom. Uh, it is a bit unique and we are going to flip it. Uh, my initial gut on here was I wanted to paint it. And I decided to go with vintage linen from DIY. And then I was going to distress it back, uh, seal it, and then I wanted to add a transfer to it. I Once I sealed it, uh, it did have a little bit of bleed through um, from the wood, even though typically the bleed through comes or happens to me normally when I painted initially. So because of that, I then decided to add a bit of um, black wax to it to just really emphasize all those details. Here I'm going in and wet distressing it. And again, when I wet distress, I just try to hit up all the raised areas and uh, just to bring out any of that detail. I do it very random uh, just to make it look really natural, like it's always been aged and distressed like that. Uh, sometimes areas get over distressed. I just, I go with it and think, well, that's the way it's going to be. So here I'm sealing it and again I went in with Big Top uh, and then this is when I had just a little bit of bleed through and I really wish I would have thought about that before because I kind of liked the look as is, uh, the bright white of it. Uh, but because I had the bleed through, I'm now going to go in with black wax to bring out all, really bring out those details even more than they are with the distressing. So I am using DIY's black wax and I would not recommend doing what I'm doing, which is I just took my wax brush and dipped it into the wax. Anytime you're using the waxes or the paints, uh, any of the items from DIY, because it is uh, all natural, you do want to pour out your product into a smaller container or take a uh, clean uh, spoon or knife and pull out the wax that you need and then use it. Um, I go through my product very quickly because I'm continuously flipping items that I don't do that, uh, but I would definitely recommend that for all of you. So I'm just going in with my wax brush. I am waxing the entire piece. Then I am taking a piece of paper towel, wiping back the excess wax, and then you can see that that dark wax just fills in all the crevices and just really makes that detail of the mask pop even more. Lastly, I'm just going back through and on any of the flat areas, I am just trying to wipe away as much of that excess wax as I possibly can. I really, like I said earlier, liked how bright and white it was, but again, I like it this way too. It actually, looking at it from this angle, reminds me of the, this character that used to be on TV, um, Beavis and Butthead. That's what this reminds me of. I don't know. Maybe I'm dating myself. But what, what do you guys think about it? Let me know in the comments. As I was digging through the bins, I found this little plaque and it just pulled at my heartstrings, guys. I loved that cute little nest. I just felt it was a bit incomplete though, so I decided I was going to take a bit of apothecary and finish this off to really make those little tiny eggs pop. 
I took Apothecary and I painted the entire edge of this all the way around Apothecary. And I really think by doing that, it made those tiny little eggs in that picture just completely pop. Now I'm wet distressing it back and you guys may think like, oh boy, she wet distresses everything. I really like this look. If you don't like distressing, you could just end the project at this point and seal it. But I like to bring back a bit of the wood grain and make it look a little bit aged because it is not something that I just painted or did. And uh, so I always like to add a little bit of distressing to each of my pieces. Lastly, I'm sealing this and really what a simple flip. Don't always think that you have to be completely elaborate to change the look of an outdated piece. Just by adding a little bit of paint to this, it really transformed the entire look of this piece. For the next project, I pulled out the paper called Catalog of Birds, and there are quite a few more birds that go along with this. Uh, so if you haven't seen this before, uh, definitely head over to my website, and it is under the Recycled Papers, and it is one of my favorite papers that came out with the last release. So uh, Lexi Grenzer, she uh, hand drew these and painted each of these beautiful little birds, and honestly, guys, she is super amazing. Um, I love everything she does. And, um, but anyways, so today we are using these birds in this project. The other product we're going to use is the stamp set called Le Courier from IOD. And if you haven't picked up any of the envelopes yet for your stamps, you guys are missing out. This got me completely organized. I do have another order in for these because everybody else is loving them just as much as I do. But I, as I pulled the Le Courier stamp set out, how I am using this is I am taking these vintage uh, coffee pots and I am going to stamp the paper like this Le Courier paper on the back or all over the front side of these and it's going to be the background to these birds. So um, I love using like kindest regards as well. But the Le Courier, I think it just adds a little bit of uh, something different than just that other font. So I am going to first ink up that top portion where it says Le Courier, and I'm going to stamp that first. After that, then I'm going to just take other pieces of the paper and stamp those underneath it randomly. Now, if this does not stamp perfectly, I'm totally okay with that. I like that look of where it looks aged, uh, like it wasn't a perfect image. It's been worn. Uh, the coffee pots are old, so it just looks like it's all part of it. So when you're stamping on something like that, just remember it doesn't have to be always just perfect. And with these, because I am stamping too on a rounded surface, it is much more difficult to get that perfect crisp image anyway. So again, I am just randomly stamping here and there just to get a little bit of that image on there. 
Well, those pots are drying, I'm going to now tackle the decoupage paper. For starters, well, I actually thought these were hummingbirds, but I cannot remember what Lexi and Royce called them. I think they called them something else, but I think they're super cute and I'm still going to say they're little hummers. So I am going to just randomly rip all the way around these birds and I I prefer that look versus like a really straight cut. Uh, I think it just looks like it's more natural when you just randomly tear all the way around. Another thing you can do is you can take like a wet brush and put a little bit of a water line around the entire image as well and then it makes the paper wet and you can tear it that way. So this is what I'm doing just randomly tearing all the way around and then uh, for the other birds I am doing a fussy cut. Last time I called it a gussy cut guys. So it is called a fussy cutting where you just basically go in and cut around the entire image of the bird as close as you can. After that, I'm taking a piece of saran wrap. I am misting the saran wrap and then I am taking that piece of decoupage paper and laying it down in that water. I am then applying one even coat of uh, the vintage linen that I had been using on the back side. So if you've been following a while, I always talk about how you want to start with a white background to really make your image pop. You don't necessarily have to um, do that. I've other folks have said that they like that look of not having the white background. So yes, you can do it either way. But if you want that image to be really bright and vibrant by doing this technique, you can still get that and uh, you don't have to have paint the, the white background first. So because I just randomly uh, tore this, I don't exactly know how much of a white background I need if I'd paint it on the piece. So now I'm painting the back side of the decoupage paper. I'm going to let it dry and then I'm gonna go and apply my decoupage medium. So I am using Liquid Patina from DIY and this is by far my favorite decoupage medium to use with the recycled papers. I am applying just one even coat over the entire back side and then after I do that I am going to flip it over and apply it to my coffee pot. Really it's as simple as laying it down peeling off that saran wrap and then just taking your paintbrush or whatever you need you could even take the saran wrap and just work out all the bubbles underneath and then I always just zap it real quick with the heat gun and then I let it dry and it's that easy so I did that to all the coffee pots and I absolutely love how these all turned out. Now that these are all dry, oh my gosh, you guys, look at how cute they look. Each one is just a little different and unique, and I, I really do just love them all. What I am going to do now is take Big Top and I am going to completely seal the entire coffee pot. So I start on the front and I seal the decoupage paper and then from there I just sealed it all the way around. I didn't have to but I just prefer to if I'm sealing just the front there, I, I just don't want it to be like, you could tell that there was a little bit of sealer on the front and not on the whole pot. So I just sealed the whole pot.
for our fifth and final project, on a live recently, I started painting this tall uh, container that I had thrifted, and I love the little hobnails on these. I recently found this other smaller container as well. So I am using the feather paintbrush to go and paint the both of these pieces. And I'm using the color Apothecary. So the feather is perfect for applying the DIY paint uh, for multiple layers. Uh, it really allows you to have a very light hand. So if you watched my live the other night, I put one coat of paint down and then I started putting another light coat of paint. And when I started that secondary coat, I was putting too much pressure on the actual paint and it actually pulled up some of the first layer. So this will help prevent that from happening. Uh, it gives you such a light hand when you're applying multiple layers or um, applying a top coat. So that one I did the first coat. Now here's the second coat of paint that I'm applying on this one. And you can see um, it just, this paintbrush, I don't know how to describe it. It actually feels like you're painting with a feather. It just has the best feel to it. And it really um, helps you, like I said, it really helps you prevent from putting on a lot of pressure on your piece so that you can get that second coat of paint on and it will be on there perfectly. During the holidays, I actually had three of these glass jars. I painted them red, then I did this same wet distressing and sealed them, and then I actually hung really cute tags off of each one. I think one said Mary, one said Joy. What do you guys, I haven't hung tags yet, but that is, I, I kind of got stumped today. I'm like, what should I say? Should I have one say spring? Should I have one say, you know, flowers? I, I didn't know. So in the comments, guys, help me out and let me know what should my hang tag on here say. So what I did uh, during the holidays is I actually took a piece of drop cloth. I punched a hole in one or on one end and then I used the stamp set called letter press and I stamped out I, one of them did say joy I think another one did say Mary and I can't remember what the third one said but because this is more of a spring show that I'm doing what do you guys think I should have my two hang tags say so after sealing it, letting it dry, I do have this twine that I always pick up at Walmart and it's just a little bit thicker, like a chunkier twine. I wrapped it around here uh, like three or four times, tied a knot, and again, I am going to add a little hang tag afterwards, but I really love how this project turned out and I am always going to be on the lookout for these cute types of jars. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Honestly, the craziest thing that I picked recently and I will show you is this mask. I <laughs> I was thrifting with somebody and we were chatting and I picked it up and instead of putting it back down, somehow I set it in my cart. So I still think he turned out pretty cool as I'm looking at him. Uh, I think it'll just take that perfect person to think he is as awesome as I made him. So we'll see if it sells. He will be at Antique Acres, a little bit of an odd piece uh, amongst all of my vintage items that I've you know flipped, but that's okay. Uh, my favorite item today are items. Uh, I loved all those vintage uh, coffee pots that I've recently picked. 
and I am absolutely loving that paper from Roy Cycled. It is called Catalog of Birds, and there are so many possibilities of things that you can do with it. And when I was picking those, that was definitely uh, my vision to use some type of Roy Cycled paper on those. And with it being spring and like summer coming and me just longing for warm weather, it was definitely the perfect uh, paper to use. I also love using um, a background and so really that Le Courier stamp from IOD worked perfectly. I also love Kindest Regards. Currently, I am completely sold out. IOD is sold out as well. So I thought, well, I am not gonna showcase one of my favorites when it is totally sold out. What is my secondary favorite? And I would have to say, Le Courier is definitely making its way up. I am really hoping that with the new release, um, you know, the IOD sisters do come out with a release every quarter. I'm hoping and praying that there is some kind of really cool font like that for um, a background. So let's pray um, that that happens. But Monday's video, guys, I'm not really sure yet. I have to go over to Antique Up and flip out a very big piece of furniture. Um, I had this shelving unit that my neighbor gave me. I was using it for my paint. The weight of the paint has really caused the shelves to slightly sag. So I don't think it, it was definitely not um, the best piece to use, but I thought it was going to work um, and it did temporarily. Uh, but I was able to find this amazing piece from the Restore and I flipped it and now I'm getting that in my booth. Uh, so we'll, I might bring you along to show you that transformation. Uh, lastly, I my uh, Creative and Network membership group is still officially open. I'm leaving it open for two weeks uh, in celebration of its one year anniversary. If you are a small business owner and you are looking for a group that is going to cheer you on and really have your back, uh, and then I, every week on Tuesday, we meet, we talk about our businesses, uh, different aspects of it, how to make them better, uh, and it's great. Um, the, the camaraderie in the group is amazing. Um, I absolutely love how far all these gals have gone with their business, uh, and I would love to see you join us. So if that is something you are interested in, I will have the information and the details in the description. Otherwise, definitely contact me at info at sonnetsgardenblooms.com and I can send you over everything in an email. All right, well, you guys have yourselves a great weekend and we will see you Monday. Bye.